The okay. sinless Lamb of God. There's always a forerunner to everything that goes on this earth, and he was the only forerunner that could be sinless. Because he was sinless before in the beginning. It didn't start afterwards, it started before the world was created. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were writing out the history of humanity before he said, let there be light. Before there was ever a universe, he was already written out the history of humanity. Read it in Psalm 139. <clears throat> Everybody thinks the beginning was actually the beginning of something. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't either. It was long term. He's a long term planning God. We're short term planning people. We got everything marked off every 10 years. Really? Before God spoke this universe into existence, He already had it all written out. That's why when He says, I made known from the, the end, from the beginning, why do you worry about tomorrows? Whoops, He already took care of tomorrow, didn't He? Live in the present. He's a right now God. That word sinless means to be free from sin, pure or perfect. Christ yielded himself as a sinless, obedient son to the Father's will. Got everybody quiet, didn't they? He yielded himself in a sinless state to the Father so that he could break the power of sin so it no longer can hold you. Amen? Amen. It's free from sin, innocent. Sinlessness is freedom from sin and guilt. Remember something, in God there was no darkness, right? First John? Amen. So when He came, He was the light of men. Amen? Amen? So guess what? When you see Him as a sinless sacrifice, that's what you're filled with. You know why people stay in sin? Because the one that broke its power lives inside of you and you don't let it. You're trying to overcome something you can't. You're not a conqueror. You're not a champion. God is in you. You have to stop living through human strength and power and abilities and the power that raised Jesus from the dead. We'll talk about the empty tomb next week. It's so important that you give up on yourself and hope in yourself and hope in Christ alone. Because hope in man is never going to get you anywhere in life. It's never going to bring you peace. We just sing joy. Hosanna, that means to praise. They were praising Him. Amen? Amen? If you have your Bibles, go to Hebrews 12. Just verses 1 and 2. It's so important that when I say before the beginning of humanity in this universe, God already knew what was going to happen. And what had to happen to set men free. In Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore... We also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Before there was ever a day on this earth, Jesus knew He was going to have to go to the cross. Yet He still made us. He still, he still created us in His image and likeness, knowing we were going to fall short of His glory. We were going to fall short of His holiness. That's why the blood, we must realize how powerful it is. It not only made us worthy to be children of God, it made us holy vessels so we could lift up holy hands and cry out, Abba, Father. We have to have life that is centered here in this earth through everything that Jesus accomplished for you. Stop trying to accomplish. You won't finish the race if you're always trying to accomplish something instead of following Christ and being Christ-like. See, He died and rose again so you don't have to be human-like. So you can be Christ-like. You can be God-like. You have all His characteristics and power and authority living in you already. So many Christians are walking around dead Christians because they don't realize the life that was put on that cross and rose on the third day and overcame Satan and all his power and disarmed him is alive in you. Amen. That's why we don't have joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. is no strength of human hope. No hope of yourself. He can't be a strength until you give up on yours. Amen? Amen. Hmm. Let's start that last six days. You have your Bibles. Turn to Matthew 21. See, so before He came, He knew He was going to have to set you free from the works of the flesh and the law. 
I can't imagine what Jesus was thinking that day when he rode in because he knew before the world began. He knew when he was going to be born. He knew he was going to be on that, the donkey, that colt, that step, that morning that he was going to ride into Jerusalem. He already knew the cross was there. He knew the people's names that were going to nail him to the cross. But never think that anybody else nailed him to the cross. Your sin did. Our sin did. Not anybody else's. The Jews didn't crucify him. The Romans didn't crucify him. Our sins did. Because the sin, and we'll get to that later. We're going to read verses 4 through 11. And all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Remember something, this was spoken of Jesus by Isaiah over 800 years before he ever got here. See, everything that's written in this book is going to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. See, it doesn't matter how far back it was. God's word is going to be fulfilled no matter what this world does. Amen. So always trust in what this says and not in what man says. Amen? Amen. By, by the prophet saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fall of a donkey. So the disciples went in as Jesus commanded them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them. And they sat on them, and they set branches and trees and spread them on the road. Wow. Man, they rolled out the red carpet for Jesus. How quickly things change. That's why that palm is there. Think about that. See, they got out and they laid this all on the road. They took clothes and jackets and put it on the road. They put them on the donkey and on the colt and they put Jesus on there. They rolled up, like you see the royalty when they go to other countries, they got the red carpet, boy, they rolled it out. What happened? The same people that did that for Jesus, five days later, were screaming, crucify him. How quickly things can change in your life. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and others cut down branches from the trees and put them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee, the sinless lamb that rode in that morning. The sinless lamb rode into town that morning. Like I said, I got a vision of this yesterday when I was studying. And I was like, he said, man, they brought, and I got a picture. When royalty goes, they send people to other countries. They come off the jet, and they got the red carpet on the ground. Six days later, he was nailed to a cross by the same people. That sang Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If you're truly a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have no fear of man. People will want to silence you. They're trying to silence the church. They have been for the last 50, 60 years in this nation. It started in 62 when they took God out of the classroom. Like I said, and I'll say it again, there is no gun problem in America. There's a God problem. There's a sin problem. There's a compromising the Word of God problem. And until this country repents of its sinful ways, especially our government, until the church rises up and rebukes the government and says, bow at the name of Jesus and yes. repent for your sins, they've turned our children and they over to the devil. You can't even mention Jesus is in a school, but they can bring all these false gods into school. Yeah, See, the body of Christ, parents have to stand up and say, you're not doing that to our children anymore. Look at all the nations in the world that have fallen. It's always the children that suffer because people didn't stand up. The church didn't stand up in 62 and say, you're not taking God out of our children's lives. Oh, that will never happen in America. Well, it happened. But we're being born again. I told you, Billy Graham's home with the Lord. That whole spirit of revival is here. The whole spirit of evangelists is going to take off like never before. There's hungry hearts and souls out here that need Jesus, and you're His representative down here. We need to take the kingdom of God to people again and walk in signs, wonders, and miracles in power because God rose so that they could see Jesus in you and all His power. And until you start to walk in dominion, the world's going to walk on you instead of the other way around. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He was sinless. Remember something. Like I said back in Hebrews, there's a cloud of witnesses over you. I just got a picture of that. All the saints that fulfilled their destiny that went before you, they're watching us. 
Do you realize all the prophets like Isaiah and all them, Jeremiah, they wish they could be here? They only had dreams and visions you're living in. You're living in. You have the anointed one, the holy one of Israel in the heavens and all the earth living inside of you. Man, how dare you settle for a second class life? <laughs> You've been made royalty. He dresses me every Sunday. So last night I went to the closet for a tie. One set of footprints. You've been carried since the day you were born. He walked a path that nobody else could because everybody's born in sin. You all have Adam and Eve's nature until you get crucified with Christ when you get born again. Amen? Because He showed me that last night. He said, no, 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 get the footprints out. I made the path for you to walk on. The narrow road is walking with me. There's only one way into heaven but through me. Amen. So he says, I made the footprints for you to walk in. If you walk in any other footprints, you will surely fall. I made a way when no one could make a way. I paid a price of sin debt that you couldn't pay. See, we have to remember everything Jesus did for us. We try and be like Jesus. No, if you started following and meditating on the Word, just meditate on the Gospels for a couple months. You'll start thinking, talking, walking, being just like Jesus. Because then your mind will be renewed. Remember something, what you focus on with your eyes, what you meditate on, what you speak, what you believe, what goes into your ears, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. What that goes in here gets processed in here and goes to your heart. Where the soil is. Where the incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God, goes in. And that's going to grow. That's where that mustard seed of faith grows. You're not going to grow in the ways of the Lord until He is the center of your existence and nothing else matters. Amen. People's lives are so out of balance today. They're so dysfunctional. Going down the road, oh my God. I want to put tires around the vehicle. <laughs> well, you know what it is? They're lost. People don't have hope. You know why? Because the church isn't giving them any. The church isn't giving them any. There's nothing to fear. We're going to live forever. A lot of them are not. See, you're going to live forever. You're going to live forever. Ever, 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 ever. You're never going to taste death. Never. We don't ever taste death. Oh, hallelujah. In the twinkling of an eye, we're in glory. Whoo! I think what a great day that's going to be. Amen. Praise God. It might be today a dance. I don't know. Because when I think about all that Jesus has done, how can your heart not be filled with joy? How can it? Would they say, who is that? Who is that? You know who that was riding on the horse? 2 Corinthians 5.21 He whom we made, who made sin, who knew no sin. He made Jesus sin the Father for you. Because He knew no sin. He was sinless. Perfect. Innocent. Not guilty of anything. Because He was a holy God. So that you could become the righteousness of God in Christ. You could. He made Jesus sin. He was holy and perfect with the Father before He left heaven. And the Spirit formed Him in Mary's womb. See, it's all what Jesus has done. One set of footprints. You only got one path to follow, and it's His. If you're following man, God have mercy on you, your soul. We need to anoint you with oil and get you refocused, okay? <laughs> and burn out that human thinking, that carnal mind of yours, so that the mind of Christ can be activated. Remember something. That's who was on the horse. But so much more was on that donkey that day. 1 John 1.29, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That doesn't mean just today. It means forever. He came. 1 John 1.29. No, John 1.29. Sorry, first chapter. It's so important that our focus is on what He accomplished. See, when he was riding on it, who is this that they're singing Hosanna to? That's who was on the horse. We're going to really talk about who was riding in that, that, that morning, that Sunday. Because it was Sunday to Sunday, all that happened. Amen? Amen. We're going to get into something that's a little tough to handle. If you got your Bibles, go to Isaiah 53. I try not to cry through these verses every time I read them. I haven't done it yet. I doubt I will today either. We got to remember who was riding in that day and what he accomplished. 
And what Isaiah spoke of all, this is 800 years ago that Isaiah saw this in the Spirit and wrote this down. we got to remember who was riding into Jerusalem that day, amen? Amen. Mm. That whole chapter is so powerful, but we're just going to read 4 to 7 because I'm sure that's all I can get through. It's hard to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and not be moved. How we can look at what He did for us, just these few verses, what He accomplished when He went to that cross, going down that road, His last six days in His human suit. It's... it's it's hard for me to even get, around, get my arms around it because for someone that was so holy, so perfect, so innocent, so sinless, so righteous, His blood was so pure that it could wash the stain of our sin away. To see what He did for us, the church has been sitting on their salvation for too long. We have forgotten what Jesus has done. Because if we're not forgetting what He's done for us and we cherish what Jesus is, who He is, and what He's accomplished for us, our whole life would change when we leave. In here it's easy. We're with family. This is, your, this is my family. It's easy to worship Jesus here. But when you go out there and you see all the people stuck in darkness, what happened that the people out there don't see how grateful you are towards Jesus? Amen? Isaiah 53, 4 through 7. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. As a sheep before his shears, silent, he opened not his mouth. He yielded himself in perfect obedience as a sinless lamb for everybody on this earth. How can we take our salvation for granted? How can we not share? But you, he took your iniquities, he took your sorrows, he took your broken heart, he took your diseases, poverty, lack, depression. Everybody goes to shrinks for medication. Why don't you go to Jesus? He already fixed your depression. He already cured all your diseases. He did it already. It's in the past tense. I can't get through those verses without it. I can't. He's done so much for us. His love is so immeasurable for all of humanity. Not just some people, not chosen people. Everybody's chosen by God to be saved and healed and whole and filled with His Holy Spirit. His love is immeasurable. It says the Bible is higher than the heavens are above the earth. We can't measure it. They're still finding solar systems. They're still finding stuff. They're still chasing their tail instead of Jesus. You know the only reason scientists come out with new stuff every couple of years about the heavens is because they want more money. Because the more they search, the more they're going to find Jesus, if they were honest with themselves. How many scientists in the last 50 years have come to say, you know what, we've been wrong. But they don't put them on the news. You hear about them once and they're gone. He has done so much for us. To yield is to submit. His father that day said, it's your time now. You go into the Virgin Mary, you be born. What I created you for, my son. 
You have to finish the race so people can come to heaven. Because there's no other way in but through His blood. There's no remission of sins and forgiveness of sins without the blood. Everything, the old covenant was through blood. The new covenant is far better because we have blood that is so holy and so powerful and so pure. You stand before God, all of you right now, holy, worthy, as white as the pure driven snow that's on that mountaintop. Amen. That's how worthy the blood makes you. So how dare you go home and look in the mirror and look down on yourself like you're something less than royalty in the sight of Almighty God. You're going to see something here in a little bit that God showed me in the Scriptures. Because um, Passover was established when? I better move on. I'll be crying all day. Go to Exodus 12. It's so important that your life change today and your focus changes. We don't know how much time is left. I said that before on this earth. But people need Jesus. What you see out here when you go through the stores today, if you go shopping this afternoon, you go out to eat like we usually do on Sunday afternoon, guess what? You know what I'm going to see? Lost souls that don't know Jesus. Because too many people go to church instead of being the church. <clears throat> they go to a place on Sunday morning, we got 40 of them in the valley. And they leave the building, they leave church. And then they go back out and they're back in their flesh. No, no, and no, and no. We're spiritual creatures. We're powerhouses for God. Amen. We're filled with resurrection power. Amen. We're filled with His dominion and authority. Yes. Like I said, with Adam and Eve lost on dominion on this earth, you got back the day you got saved. Why aren't you using your dominion? Psalm 116, 15, He's given the earth unto men for you to rule and reign as priests and kings. That's in Revelation 3. Amen? Amen. In Exodus 12, this is where the pa Passover was established. And it's so important that you realize the semblance of the Passover because there's something in there I heard Jack Hayford teach on 20-something years ago as a young Christian boy when he said that it stuck with me all these years because it's so important how God does everything so you visually see what He's doing, not just hearing His voice. There's always symbols in the Bible of what was accomplished and what took place. Here it is all the way back in Exodus when they're, getting out of, when they're about to leave Egypt. Watch the semblance of that cross even then. Exodus, we're going to go in 12. We're just going to read verses 5, 7, and 13. And he tells um, Moses and Aaron, he says, Your lamb shall be without blemish. Without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it from among the sheep or the goats. Now watch this. And then they shall take the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat. The what? The two door post and the one. He took the blood and made the sign of the cross on the Passover. They took the blood and made the sign of the cross. Jack Hayford broke that whole thing down. It was an awesome teaching how he broke that down. What a reminded man he is. Um, but it was so powerful that that stuck with me. See, God even back then said, hey, we did a whole teaching in here. You all know that laminin. What's, that, what's the molecular pro protein that holds all your organs together? A cross. It's in the shape. Before the world, before he made a human out of dust of the earth and blew the breath of life in him, he knew the cross was going to hold you together. That was before in the beginning. He designed the cross to keep us. He designed the blood to wash us. He knew he'd have to fill us with the Holy Spirit because everybody in the Old Testament was trying to earn God's grace, was trying to earn His favor. They were trying to fulfill the Ten Commandments, but he had to send Jesus who fulfilled the Ten Commandments, walk sinless so you're not cursed by the law, but you live under grace and truth in Jesus. No longer trying to earn forgiveness, you receive it. You don't have anything to sacrifice to God. He was it. So many people went on, I had to sacrifice this, I had to sacrifice that for God. No, you didn't. The Father sacrificed His Son. Amen. You got nothing to sacrifice. Nothing, not one thing. The only thing you can sacrifice is a willing heart to God to do His will. Because everything else doesn't matter to Him. He took care of it. See, our whole mentality of walking with Jesus has to be that road He was on those last six days. Because He knew before the world began, this is where He was going to be put. He was guiltless. He took all the shame, the ridicule, the condemnation that you get under the law, the judgment you get under the law. He took it down that road all the way to that cross so you never have to have it. That's why he says those that belong to the Lord will never be put to shame. 
You'll never be forsaken. God was forsaken for you. See, Jesus went through all the shame of sin and death and everything that he was put on here so you never have to taste it. Do you know that? When people say they're put to shame, about what? You're now guiltless. Amen. Amen. You're now without sin. Amen. Forever he took your sin away. He doesn't bring it back. Amen. 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 See, your whole thinking about who you are in Jesus should be different today. Not because of anything you've done. <laughs> Nothing you've done has made you guiltless or flawless. I love that one song, The Cross Has Made Me Flawless. Wow. <coughs> the cross of Christ has made you a flawless vessel mm. so you could sit here and just worship God 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. But you know what you got stuff to do. When my wife's at home playing piano at home and singing, I could just sit there for the next two weeks, okay? It wouldn't bother me a bit not to just leave. <laughs> because when she starts playing and worshiping at home, I just start praying in tongues and worshiping right along with it. I'll be in the office, she'll be on the piano, home in there praying, lifting up holy hands. And you know what? I just shouldn't stay there for a couple weeks. Be a nice break in the action, you know what I'm saying? But there's work to be done. There's lives that aren't going to get changed. You don't understand how important you are to God. I did a whole teaching in here on that. You all should know better. Because when you leave here, you don't leave church. You are the church. You're taking Jesus and all that He's done for you to other people. And it is so time for us to realize your purpose on this life is to bring glory to God, period, while you're on this planet. End of conversation. Amen. Isaiah 43, 7. I use that verse all the time because it's so powerful. I have called you by name, have made you for my glory only. And, and then two verses down it goes, and you shall be my witnesses. It isn't multiple choice in the kingdom of God. You can't pick and choose what commandments you're going to break. I suggest you don't break any of them. Just saying. <laughs> Watch what it says in verse 13 in Exodus, 12th chapter. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. <coughs> see, when you walk before God all the days of your life on this earth, He passes over you. That's why it says, so let no evil befall you. He'll guard you going out and coming in. You know why? Because when he sees his children, he sees the blood. Amen. So you won't be struck. No, you won't be struck down. You won't be destroyed. Because you don't have any foreign gods in your life. Because it goes on right after that. It talks about the foreign gods. See, because he had to strike them down to make a point. The firstborn of all Egypt. Oh, man, I can't imagine that day. And they still didn't repent. See how stubborn people can be? But when you walk this earth, God passes over you. He doesn't see you because He sees the blood. He sees His Son in you and all that Jesus did for you. See, when you walk out the door today, you should have a smile on your face from ear to ear. Because your Father looks down and always does a smile because He goes over. How do you think you hide under the shadow of His wings? Because when the Father says you're under the shadow of His wings, because the blood is over you and He sees over, He passes over. He's coming for the ones that don't know. You should be walking so free from this world and the cares of this world. He says, cast them all on Him. He cares for you. See what I'm saying? You're free from any judgment, any wrath, any destroying. It, it's not of God. Yes. Our ignorance of the Scriptures is scary out there. People keep thinking God's doing this and God's doing that. God's not doing a thing. He already did His work. Man's destroying itself, not God. And the church should be so free to minister. You should have such a boldness. You should have a boldness about you to go out and witness about Jesus. Because the Father looks down and goes, he, Oh, my, that's my child. He doesn't see what you see. He doesn't look in the mirror and go, Oh, God, his tie's not straight. No. You know why? Because he passes over my nonsense because he sees the blood. You're blood bought saints of God in Christ. Amen. You're the forgiven. You're the redeemed. You're healed. You're whole. Heart, mind, body, and soul. Thessalonians. If we would ever see ourselves the way God sees us as the redeemed of God in Christ, you would never tolerate the lies of the devil again, nor of man. 
When people tell you what you're not, say, you know what, take it up with Jesus. Because I'm under the blood. I'm covered. Amen. That'll change the way they look at you. And then they'll go, oh, you're one of those crazy people. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> people should see you such a strange lot of believers. You know that? It's time the church become radicalized again. Why don't you expect God to use you mightily? Why don't you expect God to do signs, wonders, and miracles through you? It's not just for me. It's just not for a select few. It's for everybody who believes. It says, all who believe in my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will pray with new tongues. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. What happened? It's not for some people. It's for all. He says, all who believe, all who call upon my name, they shall be saved. Amen. This isn't a select group of people. It's for everybody that he designed to go to heaven. Read the last page of the Bible. Everybody born on this planet was written in the book of life. And then you take it out by not receiving Jesus. Even those people in the Middle East that are killing and slaughtering people, you know what? God started them out to go to heaven. They chose not to follow Christ, but there's still hope for them. That's why you keep praying for revival. But the church needs a revival. The church needs to come alive again. That early church, when you read the book of Acts, man, they went everywhere the Spirit told them. Man, the dead were raised, the blind was, was seen, limbs were restored, arms were restored, legs were restored, the blind got their eyes back, hearing was restored, the deaf and the mute spoke. What happened, church? He didn't stop healing. That's the biggest lie of the devil there is. That was then. No, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth us. Amen? Amen? And he always has been and he always will be. You just got to believe it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Hebrews 9. Before Jesus came, he knew he had to come because people were in bondage to what? The law, the works of the flesh. Talks about that in Galatians, amen? You can't earn anything with God. He came, and actually when he came and he died, he took the power of the law to the cross with him. He took all the old covenant and nailed it to the cross with him to break its power to keep you in bondage to trying to earn from God ever again. You don't earn your healing, you're already healed. You don't earn your salvation, it's a free gift, so you can't boast in it in Ephesians 2. <laughs> you can't even boast in your own salvation because you didn't save yourself. He took care of that. See what I'm saying? When He came, He took all works of your flesh to try and get God's grace because He's always been the God of grace and mercy. David talked about His mercy all through the Psalms. Amen? And it's so important that you see yourself today is stop trying to get something from God. Stop trying to get something from God. You can't. It's already there. I told you, he's a Christmas present. Just open the box. It's in there. You know what the box is? <coughs> from Genesis to Revelation. This is a gift from God that never, that never stops giving. If you've got an issue in your life, look it up in here. Go to your concordance and look it up. The answer's here. The answers to this life are written from Genesis to Revelation. Whether it's healing, whether it's prosperity, whether it's wisdom, whether it's knowledge, whether it's strength, whether it's restoration. Everything that you are is written in here. You know why Christians don't know who they are? Because they don't study what they are. What Jesus made you. You didn't make yourself. Remember Psalm 100? We're the sheep of His pasture. It's not us who made ourselves, but He who made us. But He made us to be royalty, to be priests and kings. We don't live as such because we're trying to be something you're not equipped to be. You're made to be like Jesus. You're not made to be like man. Amen. Oh, Amen. Maybe you like being human too much. <laughs> hmm. I want to be a child of God. <laughs> you already are. We see, we already got yeah, that. But see what I'm saying though? Yep. Believe me some being human, it feels good some days. But that's why even now that he's allowing me to work out and get in shape again, guess what? I still have biblical teachings on in worship music why I'm doing it. So, it, it really, yeah, he's letting me get a lot healthier, but he's also teaching me in the meantime. <laughs> and he told me to get out some more teachings. He's got a whole stack of CD teachings at home that I can put on my little 
boombox out in the garage why I'm working out. See, so, yeah, it feels good in the flesh to feel healthy, but why I'm out there doing it, I have teachings on I have worship music on it. So that my focus doesn't get back on me, but on Him who's keeping me healthy, who's keeping me fresh and flourishing. Like I said, I tell people all the time, you're supposed to get better and better and better under the noonday sun. Your life says in Proverbs, you'll get brighter and brighter under the noonday sun. That's the coming of the Lord when you meet Him in the air, amen? Mm -hmm. So you should feel fresh and flourishing. You shouldn't feel old and tired. Why would you? When did Abraham have the promised child? <laughs> yeah. He was 100. Honey, we still got time. <laughs> wow, can't believe I just said that. <laughs> the last time I prophesied over myself, I opened up this ministry and became a pastor. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that took six months of fighting to do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, well, I was going to stay an evangelist. Yo. And then I said something one day, I was at a ministry, and I walked home, I looked at her, I said, I'm a dead man. I just prophesied over myself. I just did it again. I keep telling people I'm getting younger, which I am. You know why? You know why I'm getting younger and stronger and healthier? Because he said so. Because he said so. He'll fill me with his strength. He'll bless me with his peace. This living word is health to my flesh and strength to my bones. He became sick so I never have to. I don't deny its existence. It just doesn't have any right to this man of God. You know why? Because he told me so. He said, what I decree and declare of God, he will put his light upon it and he will bring it to pass. It isn't through my effort. It's through my speaking. Amen. We just talked about the spoken word of God last week. When you speak the word of God, as listen to Mr. Hagen teach the other day, that rhema, that spoken word of God, when you speak it, why don't you expect it to happen? I do. You know why? Because he can't deny himself. We talked about it last week. God can't deny himself. He can't lie. And if he said, speak my word with power and authority and dominion that I've given you, that you're seated in heavenly places with me, all of his promises are yes and amen, and I'm going to claim every one of them for myself, and you should be too. Because it's for all of his children. It's not for a select few. Yeah. Stop looking at other Christians. What they got, get yours. Get what's rightfully yours in the new covenant. I am not a name and claim it Christian. God says, believe me. For all who believe, I'm a believer. Do we have believers in here Jesus, today? Jesus, yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So when God says, believe me, that I want you to prosper in all things, even under your health, even as your soul prospers, He wants every area of your life blessed. Hallelujah. Thessalonians, you'll be complete in Christ, your heart, mind, body, and soul. Complete in Him. He takes pleasure in your prosperity. Why don't you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. See, they're looking at others. Well, look what they got. Why are you looking at them? You don't got because you don't ask. Amen. You don't decree and declare that His promises are yes and amen. There is a part of Deuteronomy 28, those first 14 verses. Everybody, they quote those. I'm the head and not the tail. I sit above and never the beneath. Your blessings will chase me down and over. But they forget the first line. <laughs> when you do all that I command you, then <laughs> these blessings will come upon you. Have you done all God has commanded you? Get one amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Oh boy, it gets quiet, doesn't it? It got real quiet. Mm. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14. When you get a peek, just talk about Jesus all day. You know that? Yes. Thank you, Lord. 13 to 14 in Hebrews 9. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a heifer and the sprinkling of the unclean sanctifies the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself, what? Without spot to God. Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The sinless Lamb took away your sin conscience. If you're truly born again, and you know what the blood did for you, you should never be sin conscious again because it's already been dealt with. Your past sins... Since today, and, and when you fall short next week, it's already been dealt with. It's the last sacrifice. Sin has already been settled in heaven. 
Our jobs take accountability when we fall short. But remember, you'll never feel judgment, you'll never feel condemnation, you'll never feel guilt from God. He got all that, he put all that on his son. <coughs> See, when he wrote down, need some water? Amen. Got it? Um, it is so good in Jesus' name. Stop that cough. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. She got it. She got it. We're good to go. But do you see what I'm saying? Your conscience should never be sin conscious again because your sin's already been settled by Jesus. Okay, you fell short, you fall short tomorrow, you make a mistake. Okay. Get over yourself. Repent. Turn to God. And as soon as you said, Lord, before you said, I'm sorry, you know what? He already knows your heart. It's already, you know why? Because the Father goes over it. Why? He passes over because of Jesus. So don't sit there and beat yourself up for something that he has no record of. Amen. So many Christians don't know the power of the blood. It says, I remember your sins no more. They're removed as far as the east is from the west. Confess your sins to him who cleanse you of all unrighteousness, not some. So never be sin conscious anymore. You know how people fall back into sin? Well, I used to. Well, why are you remembering what you used to do? That's not you anymore. You're a new creation with God in Christ. Amen. Old things have been done away with. Behold, all things have become new. You're a brand new vessel today. Live as such. It, it drives me crazy when people say, well, I used to this, I used to that. You're heading there. You're heading there because now you're entertaining what you used to. Maybe you enjoyed it too much. Oh, Yeah. Galatians 2.20, it's no longer you. You were supposed to be crucified with Jesus. Did we forget that part? <laughs> Nobody likes that word, do they? But you know what? There's different levels of death when you follow Jesus. When you got born again, you knew you needed a Savior. You had an epiphany with God. You said, I'm in trouble. I need some help down here. But then the process really begins of making you smaller so He can become bigger. When John said, I must decrease, he must increase. That's your life of being crucified daily. Not just the Sunday you got saved. Because you die to yourself more and more as you allow Christ to take you over more and more. You know what crucifies you? Meditating on the Word. Because this is what convicts us. This is what sets you free from yourself when you realize what Jesus has done for you. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But it's so important that you no longer have sin conscious in your thinking. That may, you know what that means? You haven't forgiven yourself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So many people fall back because they have judged themselves when God never did. Amen. He didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world should be saved through Him. John 3.17, not 16. You should never feel condemned as long as you're alive. There is no condemnation, therefore, that those who are in Christ Jesus who don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There's no He got condemned, so you never will be. Amen. See, so if you haven't forgiven yourself, well, I feel condemned. You never forgave yourself. When God did the moment you asked for forgiveness, He forgave you right then. He erased it. It's done. It's finished. It's erased in heaven. Why bring up something that God doesn't remember? That's how free you should be from sin conscious anymore. He took care of it. Because the blood of goats and lambs and all the other stuff, that couldn't do anything. Heck, they had their sacrificial offerings. They were sinning by Sunday afternoon. The religious leaders, they had their sacrifices. Oh, yeah. But they had their robes on. Oh, yeah, they looked good. But Sunday afternoon, they were getting rid of that wife because she didn't have any male children. And went, put her out got another one. So I don't know what they were sacrificing for. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. He set you free from having to dwell on anything that's happened in your life. Hallelujah. Your hope is where? In the future. In the future. In the future. A hope in the future is knowing you don't have a past. He broke your past. He destroyed it. It's gone. It's obliterated. It's history. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Something else he gave me last day afternoon when I was sitting there, and then I went back over it last time. You know, we talk about what Jesus was carrying on that riding into Jerusalem that day. Then I got a vision last night. And it was like, the Spirit said, Dennis, go talk about my son was feeling when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane that last week of his life. And his sweat turned into drops of blood. He was praying so hard for us. He knew what he was about to face. But he says, nobody understands what I went through as his father. 
How do you think the father felt that week? That's why when people say sickness comes from God, judgment comes from God. How dare you? How dare you think God doesn't want you well? How dare you? How do you think the father felt that way? What father would want his child sick? What father would want his child nailed to a cross? What child, what father would want his child to pay for something he didn't do? Jesus paid for all sins from beginning to end, for sin he never committed. He was, he was judged guilty for the sin. He became sin. But the father spoke last night to me, and I just sat there and cried. He said, nobody, no, everybody talks about what my son experienced that week, but nobody talks about what I experienced. Because I knew before the foundation of the earth that I would have to send my son, who is holy, who is sinless, who is perfect, who was innocent to that cross. He grieved as much as Jesus did, if not more. Because no father would wish that on his son. So the next time somebody tells you that God wants you sick, that God doesn't want you to have a blessed life of grace and truth and all the blessings of Abraham be poured to you, to your family, to your children, to the grandchildren after her and everything else, guess what? They don't know Jesus. Because the Father wants you well because He took all sickness, all curses of the law, and implied it to His innocent Son over 2,000 years ago. So the next time someone tells you that, Talk to them about the father sending his son. Because no father in his right mind would wish evil on a child. Especially our heavenly father. Amen? Amen. So we'll finish with John 19. <clears throat> Just verses 28 to 30. Remember, as you think about this today, think about the father looking down on his son on the power of that love for him to give up all he could give to humanity to save us. Amen? Amen. John 19, verses 28 to 30. And after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel of sour wine was sitting there and they filled the sponge with sour wine and put it on hyssop and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. The three most powerful words in the Bible. Because without them, nobody goes to heaven. There's no doorway in. The veil doesn't get torn. People would still be sacrificing animals, but we wouldn't because it would all be gone by now. Because man had gotten so wicked by the time Jesus came, even the religious leaders were as wicked as the days were long. They no longer honored God and they mocked Him. Because for 400 years He hadn't spoken. <clears throat> when Jesus came, He brought the new covenant. Now it was no longer curse your enemies, now it was pray for your enemies. Now it was no longer an eye for an eye, it was forgive them, they know not what they do. Everything changed when he came. And everything, you're of a new spirit, it says. When, uh, who was it, John? And I think Peter wanted to cast fire down on their heads like Elijah did. And Luke, he says, you don't know what spirit you're of. We don't do that anymore. We show mercy. We show compassion. We show forgiveness. It's the key to the Christian walk and the love of God that you walk in a constant state of forgiveness and mercy and compassion because to be like Jesus, you must be like that. We don't have the right not to forgive. The Son of God was still ministering to His last breath when He looked up, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And yet we hold stuff against people. Quiet. It should be quiet here. Because we need to have our hearts examined. Like I said, I've been crying for three days trying to study this and put a message together. Because it's so overwhelming, the goodness of God. Reading those scriptures just coming alive to me. I never saw how the Father saw that last week. Until last night. I come out, my wife was sitting there, I'm crying. She goes, <laughs> she just looked at me and I said, guess what? And I shared it with her and she cried. 
Because we have to see the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and the love they have for us. How they planned before they made humanity, how they were going to save us. Because the three work together as one unit. Amen? Amen. The Father's love, the Son of evangelism that He sent to spread the kingdom of God on the earth. So when He ascended on high, now the kingdom dwells within us. We don't go looking for it. It's already here. The kingdom of God's in all of you. Amen? Amen. So let today change your hearts to be grateful and thankful to Almighty God who sent His Son for you. Next week you'll see the power of the empty tomb. But it's so powerful what God did for us. That's why it says we take communion. Next week we take communion, right? The empty tomb next Sunday, the whole bit. Guess what? It's all about what He did. You notice the whole Bible is about what God did. It's not about what we've done. <laughs> but now we get the honor, the privilege from Almighty God to be an earthen vessel for Him to live His life through. Man, this is going to be the greatest days on the history of the earth. Billions and billions and billions of souls are going to get saved and set free. Like I told you before, and like you must always remember, the only thing the devil owns is a lake of fire. And he's getting closer to his days of swimming in for eternity. Amen? Amen? We are the church. We are the resurrection and the life through Jesus Christ. We've been raised from the tomb to walk in the newness of life through Jesus. Not through your power, nor your abilities, nor your wisdom, nor your strength, but through His. We have to stop looking to people. We've got to look to Jesus for all things in our life because man is always going to disappoint you and Jesus never can. Like I said, people have failure in their vocabulary. <clears throat> it's not in His. Amen? Amen? It's not in His. Amen. And guess what? None of you have ever failed God. Oh, I got quiet at God. How many of you, me included, have said, God, I failed you? Be honest with yourselves. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yes, you have. I'm not the only one that's got that t-shirt. <laughs> but you know what he told me? He said, falling short and failing is two different words. You fell short because you tried to serve me on your own power and your own abilities. And who fixed it? I said, you did. <laughs> who forgave you for your foolishness and trying to do things on your own? You did. He said, so see, you didn't really fail. You stepped out into something you weren't ready for. Too many of us go out and we want to do all these things to please God. You pleased Him the day you gave your heart to Him. It made Him so happy when you said yes. Because now you became a purchased possession because of what Jesus did for you. Now it's up to you to receive His goodness, His Holy Spirit, and to be led and guided by Him. We have to stop being people pleasers. We have to be God pleasers. People pleasers will never be able to serve God because they didn't they didn't care what people think about you. Really, why? They didn't go to the cross for you. You're not made in their image and likeness, but His. God doesn't make junk. He makes all things beautiful. Amen. Amen. Everything that He created, He said, "What did He say? It was good, and He was well pleased." Stop trying to be pleasing and just follow. That's what pleases God. Because when you're being led by the Spirit, you walk in the blessings of the Lord. You walk in joy and peace. Then you'll feel His goodness and His grace. Remember, we stand in that fountain, a rain of grace on you all the time. Because He passes over you. The judgment that's coming on the rest of humanity. You're always going to be passed over from judgment and condemnation and guilt and everything else because He's already paid for that for you. So as we celebrate the Passover, the institution of it back in Exodus, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ always keeps you safe. It always keeps you safe and it has bought you so you're eternally redeemed forevermore. Your, pay, your ticket into heaven is paid for. Your mansion is built. Rejoice while you're here on this earth in the Lord Jesus and then His joy will become your strength. We are in such an anointed time of the history of humanity. Make the most of it. Tell God you want Him to do something great with your life. Not you doing great things. God does great things through us. I've never saved anybody. I've never healed anybody. But in the name of Jesus, I can pray for them and God in me will. We're to lead people to Jesus. Amen.